you tonight. Are you ready for this band? Yeah. Next up, we've got the romantical, mystical magic of Mr. Roger Whitbush. Put your hands together. My first encounter with magic, I guess I was about 11 years old. We were visiting uh, my aunt and uncle from Fort Benning, Georgia. There was a friend of theirs, his name was Gaylord. He grabbed a paper bag and he held the bag up and said, watch these invisible balls. I'm like, what balls? So he tossed the ball in there and caught it in the bag and I could see it dropping in the bag. I can hear it rather, drop into the bag. He did it again. Dropped in the bag. I said, whoa. He did it again and it dropped in the bag. He did it about five times. And then he handed me the bag and I looked inside there to get the balls and there was nothing in there. And I was like, how did you do that? He said, it's magic. And since then, I have been hooked on magic. Especially when I saw my first magic special on TV, Doug Henney. Doug Henney was so great. I used to like, he, he had this hippie style about him. His hair was long and he wore all these colorful costumes and everything. And the, his show was just fabulous, and so magic eventually became a hobby of mine. My first magic book was called the Cub Scout Book of Magic. It was actually put out by the Boy Scouts of America, and uh, I used to bore people to death with, hey, Pick a card, pick a card, especially my sisters. They got tired of me until I pick a card. Sometimes they didn't work, sometimes they did. But I, I got good, now, now I'm good. Now I'm good with doing coin tricks and card tricks. Really good. Fast forward, I, I joined the Air Force. Um, I was I, when I was, I was stationed in Japan, and then I got uh, transferred to Victorville, California, to uh, Air Force Base. It was George Air Force Base. Uh, I I had met some people who lived there, and so I was over uh, entertaining one one of the ladies that I had met. Her daughter had a birthday. And she was having a birthday party. I just happened to be there. And they didn't know me, nothing about me doing magic. Or, or, but I felt compelled to start doing magic tricks for the little girl since it was her birthday. Where her mom saw me doing this. I mean, the daughter's mom, her grandmother saw me doing it. And she happened to be the superintendent of the Head Start in Victorville. So she asked me, she said, you good. She said, uh, you should come out and do a, a magic show for my school. So I agreed to do it. I had no magic routine, not one. I had, I did card tricks. So I went to the library and uh, I put together some stuff out of, this, out of this book in the library. And one of the guys that I worked with, his name was uh, Ronald Rogers, Ronald Skip Rogers. And Skip was a ventriloquist. And so I asked Skip, I said, he had, he had a dummy that he called Corky. So I, I asked Skip, I said, Skip, um, uh, you, uh, would you like to do a show with me? And uh, he said, yeah, so he, he agreed to do it. And I mean, I was terrified. I didn't know anything about doing a magic show, but we did it. Afterwards, after the show was over with uh, Mrs. Butler, that was her name, Mrs. Butler, Evelyn Butler, that was her name. She gave me my start in, in as a professional magician. Uh, she told me, she walked up to me and she said, you are really good. You should get paid for this. And I said, huh, what a concept. Why didn't I think of that? So that year in 84, actually, I got out of the Air Force and 
move to Las Vegas. Um, while I was in Las Vegas, I, uh, I learned everything I could about magic. I worked in two different magic shops. One of them was called uh, Magic Mansion, which was located in the Circus Circus Hotel. And the other one was uh, Wizard's Den, which was located um, in the Flamingo Hilton. Well, I learned, I, I did magic constantly. And I got, I, there was a magic club that met every, I think it was every Wednesday night. It was called uh, Darwin's Magic Club. So, um, I learned, uh, I practiced and practiced and practiced, and uh, when I got, when I started getting good, I got a routine together, and I started going out to different clubs, um, uh, going around, you know, looking at, just sitting around in the club, and, you know, I would say, hey, I think I want to perform in here. And I would go and ask the manager, I would say, hey, can I do a magic show here? And he would say, yeah. And I'm like, okay. So I started, you know, I, I started getting a bunch of guys together and, and creating my own little production. Um, during my time in Las Vegas, I, I did a lot of stuff as, as far as magic was concerned. I, um, I wrote an article in the, uh, it was called the Las Vegas Kids Magazine. I wrote an article called Homemade Magic. Finally, after about 10 years, I decided to move back to Georgia. Uh, so I moved, uh, moved back to Macon. Actually, I stayed outside of Macon. And, uh, but I ended up um, touring, hooking up with this entertainment group called Tigger Entertainment. He took me down to uh, Augusta, Georgia. I was opening up for uh, Roy Ayers. There was a limousine driver who was uh, uh, chauffeuring Roy Ayers around town. He came up to me and said, hey man, I don't know what you're doing tonight, but if you got time, uh, you should stop by this club. When I pulled up in front of the club, this guy was standing outside the club on an awning. He came out to my car, opened an armorella, and walked me in the club. He took me up front and set me down and said, uh, Mr. Friday, this is the guy that I was telling you about. He said, Roger Wimbush, Larry Friday. He said, yeah, I'm a James Brown personal manager. Mr. Brown would uh, probably like to, like to take an act on the road uh, like yours with him. We'll be in touch. Uh, Mr. Brown would probably want to meet with you. About a week later, I get this phone call from this lady saying that uh, Mr. Brown would like for me to come down to, a, to his office. So, I took a trip down to Augusta, met Mr. Brown, sat down, and um, I did a couple of things for him. So he said, sign him up. So I got signed with the James Brown tour. When I first met Roger, it was like uh, Mr. Brown, James Brown, of course, the godfather of soul, it said, we're going to add an addition to the show. We're going to bring in, I think I'm going to add a musician. And we had to find out what song we're going to, Ryan, get a song together for Winbush. So I think we did, I think this is until we did a song. Was, da, 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 da. Yeah, we used to do that with a hymn. Yeah, that used to be a little thing. And then we go, uh. Daddy where we come up and now the expression, the magical expressions of Roger Winbush. It was a cool out break for us so we could kind of like chill out. And we were kind of enjoying the show too. So at first I'm trying to figure out, ah, this, he ain't gonna do it. But actually he did, he did pretty good. Well, my favorite part of the show actually was the, uh, the finale. He brings everybody out onto the stage uh, the, that, was, that was performing that night. He's singing and we're jumping around and pointing to the audience and just, just having a, a good old time. Then uh, it was Heather's birthday one time and uh, we were trying to do some uh, something for Heather, Heather Hayes, which is Isaac Hayes' daughter. And uh, we got with Winbush and we said, well, look, we got to do something for Heather. So he came up with this trick and I still don't even know to this day. We told one person to hold a hand and another person to hold a hand or something like that. And he did his Alakazam, Alakazooza, Zoo, or whatever they do. And he said something, and he pulled a bra out of Heather. I mean, it, even Heather was amazed because she didn't feel anything. 
And we were holding his hand. We didn't feel anything. All we know is a bra came out from under her. I said, okay, this brother's showing sure up for real. He's for real. He's real. But to sum it all up, you know, he's a great guy. And I'm really glad I had a chance to meet him. And I'm glad I had a chance to work with him. So if you need a good magician right now, and if you need some work, you better call Roger. He knows exactly what he's doing. And that's all I got to say. Peace out. I never thought a hobby would take me on the journey that I've had. Like James Brown said, living in America. <laughs> <laughs>